This question appeared in NEET PG 2023. And the question says that a 44 year old person came with a history of lymphadenopathy, complaint of lymphadenopathy. On examination, he has generalized lymphadenopathy, but there was no organomegaly. You did a peripheral smear and this is what is shown in the peripheral smear. What is the next step in diagnosis? And your options are lymph node biopsy, flow cytometry, bone marrow examination, and the last is genetic analysis. Now, let's look at the slide which is given. So what is this? It has already been marked in the slide also. What is this? So what happens, this we call as smudge cells. And in this particular disease, which we are, you know, having our index of suspicion, there is a defective cytoskeleton, we maintain protein. And because of that, these cells are very, very fragile. So when you're making a peripheral smear, these cells will burst. And that is why they are smudging. And that is why they are forming smudge cells. Okay. So based on presence of a smudge cells, okay, generalized lymphadenopathy with no organomegaly, we are thinking towards a diagnosis of CLL. Okay. So we are thinking a diagnosis of CLL. Now, what should be our next step? to think or to further confirm our diagnosis. So before I get into the options, let me talk a little about flow cytometry. Now flow cytometry is a, a, a technology by which what happens is we put the sample through this, uh, you know, inlet. There is a stealth food which is, you know, uh, put through another inlet. And what this stealth food will do is there will be hydrodynamic focusing. What does it mean is that this cells will be focused into a single line of cells, okay, into a single line, it will be, you know, pushed into this. And then we have a laser light source. And based on what kind of deflection and what kind of scatter pattern we get, we are able to identify the properties of the cells. So this is flow cytometry. Now let's come to the option. Let's talk about lymph node biopsy. So we know that yes, we can do a lymph node biopsy in patients of CLL and we will get a uh, you know, diffuse lymph node effacement when we do a lymph node biopsy. Flow cytometry. So there will be, you know, CD counters like CD5, CD19, CD20 or even CD23. All these can be present and that again can help us to further narrow down our diagnosis towards CLL. Bone marrow examination again can find, uh, you know, give some very important clues, but they are generally not done initially to confirm the diagnosis. They can be done to, you know, establish further, you know, uh, when we are managing the patient. Genetic analysis again, uh, when we want to know certain markers for prognostication processes, then, so if you see all these three are invasive procedures, the only non-invasive procedure mentioned is flow cytometry. I mean, uh, to the degree. So the correct answer because he is asking about the next step in the diagnosis. So you should go with B flow cytometry. Although the finding towards CLL will be fine in all the tests, but you should always think in terms of which is the, you know, uh, more easier way. So the next step towards the diagnosis and once you have the CD markers, you can establish a diagnosis. Now let me take you through a very, very important flow chart, which will help you to analyze CD markers when they are given in the examination. Okay, you, because in the examination, they will give you a couple of CD markers and then they will ask you to identify, you know, the probable condition. So this CD marker, approach to CD marker, this is a very important two minutes slide. So first is what is the marker for B cells? So remember CD19 is the marker for B cells. And once you have CD19 positive, it can further be divided into two subgroups, CD5 positive and CD5 negative. When we look at CD5 positive, again, we can, the CD5 positive will be divided into two subgroups. One is CD23 positive and one is CD23 negative. Okay. The CD23 positive will be CD22 negative and CD23 negative will be CD22 positive. Can you guess? So this is basically your CLL and this is your mantle cell lymphoma. So in CLL, you will have 19 positive, 5 positive and 23 positive. These are the positive. Okay. You will have negative of 22. When we talk about mantle cell lymphoma, you will have 19 positive and 22 positive, but you will have 23 negative. Easy to remember. So CD19 is the lineage for B cells. Then you see CD5 and then you see CD23.
let's move forward for the subgroup where CD5 is negative, then you see CD10. So CD10, if it is positive, you know it's follicular lymphoma. If CD10 is negative, then you look for CD25. So if CD25 is positive, you have got hairy cell leukemia, uh, lymphoma, and if CD25 is negative, you have marginal cell lymphoma. You have marginal cell lymphoma. So this is a very, very important, you know, flowchart. First, you will see CD19, then CD5, positive, negative. If CD5 is positive, either you can have CLL or mantle cell lymphoma, depending upon CD23. If CD5 is negative, you just look at CD10. If CD10 is positive, you have follicular lymphoma. If CD10 is negative, then you uh, then you look for CD25. If CD25 is positive, you have hairy cell lymphoma. If CD25 is negative, you have got marginal cell uh, zone lymphoma. So this is an approach towards your all the CD markers. And again, very, very important topic. A lot of questions keep on asking directly through CD markers. They can give you a clinical case and based on that, they will infuse some information and you will have to make a diagnosis.